Seth comes down, and then he's wearing his mum's rug. He looked like Sully from Monsters Inc. with that like giant green thing that he was yeah, wearing. Yeah, I've described him as um, the Frank Zappa of sports entertainment. <laughs> yeah, he, he has. He, he's absolutely things. brilliant, but he's out there. Yeah. Oh, he was wearing a blouse as well for a top, which uh, was also quite interesting, quite lacy. As you do, just as you would name your sword after your mother. <laughs> what is Seth Rollins' character? What's what is it? Because I didn't understand what you mean, he was. What is, what is the quality of the man's character? He's honest. He's hardworking. No, uh, I, I'd, I'd more say for his gimmick. What? How would you describe his gimmick in three words? Because I know people kept referring to him Seth freaking Rollins, but I didn't. I don't know what he's all about. That shit crazy. Three words. Mm. I'm not good at that, James. That was pretty. That was pretty good. So, is he just yeah. a crazy man? Uh, they call him a visionary. I listen to the announcers. They call him a visionary. So, uh, yeah. I mean, he had he had a, looked like a high school uh, choir, or you know, something like that. Seeing him in, and he's just he's crazy, man. He's like a I, that's the only way I could describe him is like he's like Frank Zappa to the WWE. He's just out there. He doesn't wear the same thing twice. He's just surreal. I'm not really sure because I took some time away, like you know, a couple years. So I haven't been up on things, mm. which is also if I'm watching this and Seth's in the ring and we've seen the video package, right? And then we see the Tron and the graphics and we see American Nightmare. What's American Nightmare? It's a play off the American dream. That's all I know. Right. What? <laughs> so what I'm saying is like <laughs> to first time viewers and there might be some people who are watching WrestleMania who don't turn into uh, the Turner Sports Networks or the Turner Broadcast, right? Mm -hmm. Uh so they might not be up on what the American nightmare is. And it might be people who uh, aren't familiar with the American dream, Dusty Rhodes, who watch it. And okay, if he is American dream son, and we've put together that he's the American nightmare, so what? You know, like, tell us more about it. They don't, uh, so I don't know, I was, I was really interested to see what they were going to do in this match. Well, <clears throat> I think because WWE's habits of never referencing other companies or very rarely referencing each other's, uh, you know, another company is that they won't mention Japan. They won't mention Ring of Honor now that Tony Khan's bought it. They won't mention AEW for obvious reasons. So all they said was, he's been away for six years. And if you were a fan beforehand, you'll have only known him as Stardust for several years as well. So the last time Cody Rhodes was on WWE TV as himself or a version of himself, it was, what, eight years ago or nine years ago or something? Probably about eight years ago, yeah, I'd say. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. There's a big ovation because at WrestleMania, obviously, there's going to be more um, loyal fans, you know, and you're going to have your more, um, more than casual fans, more formal fans, I should say. I won't say sophisticated or smart, but I'll say more formal you know, and uh, so they'll know who Cody is. Um, don't know why he's Vince's pick. Right off the bat, I don't know why, you know, maybe some of that could have been explained and helped the story a little bit. This is Cody Rhodes. Uh, why did Vince McMahon choose Cody Rhodes to compete against Seth Rollins at WrestleMania? Don't know. Do you? No, it wasn't explained. Uh, I will ask this, though. Is as far as a wrestler is concerned, not a promoter or a booker or anything, but as a wrestler, is Cody Rhodes currently the smartest wrestler out there? Because he left, he's left places several times at the exact right time to maximize his potential elsewhere. Um, you're asking me, okay, if I understand this correctly, is Cody Rhodes the smartest wrestler out there? because he's left places at the exact right time. 
Yeah, so maybe I think maybe Roman Reigns is the smartest because he decided to choose to stay. He decided to go to the very top spot and then just stay. Mm-hmm. Like the whole time Cody was leaving places, Roman just stayed because he got to the place first. So maybe Roman's the smartest. Or is Brock because he works less dates and earns more money. Brock Lesnar is smart. Roman Reigns is smart. Cody Rhodes leaves a lot of places. So I don't know if if it's smart because uh, I'm so damn over and I'm drawing so much money that these people refuse to make me happy and give me what I'm worth. So I'm going to leave and go somewhere else. And also not draw money and then also leave that place to go somewhere else and convince them that I'm going to draw them money and then I'm going to not draw money but I'm going to leave before I can get figured out and I'll go somewhere else Hmm. Uh, yeah probably smart yeah Cody's smart yeah he makes a lot of money and he's got people uh, thinking he's worth it you know and paying him for it so you got to be smart I'm not saying that he's not worth it. Of course he's worth it. They're paying him. So he's worth it. So when uh, when you were doing producing and uh, he was doing the Stardust thing, uh, w- was there any who would come to you? Let's say, would Cody ever come to you and just say, man, I really hate this Stardust character. I'd love to get back to Cody. Or, you know, did he ever talk to you about this kind of thing where he just wanted to be himself? Um, Cody... With Stardust, Cody, uh, as with anything, Cody threw himself 100% into it. With Stardust, there were uh, one show I was a producer on overseas on a tour uh, as an agent, and uh, Cody had a signing um, in another town, and then because of traffic, it's just whatever travel situation was. He wasn't on the bus to get to the show. And so we're waiting on him from a second hired car. And they end up having to go down the Autobahn in Germany to get to the town. At which time, the only time Cody had any time to do this, had to apply all of his Stardust makeup while he was riding on the Autobahn because he chose to do something that was, uh, and I forget what it was, but it was something that like Cody was doing for the company, like an appearance or some media or something like that. And then putting everything on and making it in time and going like, and Cody never complained about the Stardust gimmick. He tried to make it work. He tried everything he could. He, um, he, he applied himself. Mm-hmm. He did. Yeah. And he didn't complain. He, he took to it like Dream took to the polka dots. Mm. Yeah. 